The scripture lesson for the first sermon in this series uh, comes to us from the very first of, uh, of the of chapter 37, chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. Hear the word of the Lord as given to us uh, in the book of Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph was 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he had this had the son of his old age and he was and he made him a long robe with sleeves but when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him once Joseph had a dream and when he told it to his brothers they hated him even more he said to them listen to the dream that I dreamed there, were, there we were, binding sheaves in the field, and suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. He had another dream, and he told it to his brother, saying, Look, I've had another dream. The sun and the moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told this to his father and his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What kind of dream is this that you, ha that you have had? Shall we indeed come, I and your mother and your brothers, and bow to the ground before you? So his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, as I said earlier, today begins our uh, sermon series, and this week begins our uh, 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 study, When Life Gives You Lemons, using the story of Joseph. Uh, um, I hope that the sermons uh, in, this, uh, in the series, we're going to have five sermons, but the, the study is seven weeks long. Uh, so I hope the sermons uh, whet your appetite uh, for the study so that you can dig, dig deeper and go deeper into, uh, into this story. It's really the story of Joseph uh, uh, instead of the, the story of Jacob. Um, but as I said earlier, it, it takes up about a third of uh, the entire book of, uh, of Genesis. So it's important for us, and there are a lot of lessons for us. Uh, so I hope that you will... Uh, uh, tune into all of the uh, all of the sermons, but also uh, uh, um, go along with us in our uh, in our studies. We could be more specific when we say when life gives you lemons. Uh, we could be more specific and say when the year 2020 gives you lemons. Uh, 2020 has been has been one big lemon as a, and has soured uh, all of our lives in ways unimaginable until. We learned of the coronavirus pandemic in February and March of, uh, of 2020. To add insult to injury, the, the unrest and rioting that has, rioting that has stemmed from um, legitimate peace assemblies and protests uh, to encourage meaningful reform, but has been co-opted by, by fringe groups in an attempt to incite civil unrest and destabilize, destabilize governments and uh, and, and destabilize social order. Now that's their words, not mine. It's estimated to cost our cities and insurance companies between one and two billion dollars. Fanned also because 2020 happens to be an election year and our country couldn't be more divided politically and culturally. And when you thought the incivility and the division in our nation couldn't get any worse, we hear that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg dies which will only serve to heighten the hostilities between uh, the political parties, our political parties. 
Just one note, uh, Justin mentioned it, her, in, uh, her family and our prayers, but just one note on Justin, Ju Justice Ginsburg uh, passing. First, uh, we all, of course, pray for comfort and peace for her family and, and those who were, close, who were closest to her and are mourning her loss, including the other Supreme Court justices and their families and staff. Uh, but our nation could take a, take a lesson from the relationship that Justice Ginsburg had with, uh, with, uh, with Justice Antonin Scalia before his death. Although they were rarely on the same side of Supreme Court decisions, Justices Ginsburg and Scalia were the best of friends. Their families uh, socialized together. Their families were close. And they had enormous respect for each other. And if we can't get back to civility and debating policy without trying to destroy anyone who, who, who disagrees with us, we have, lost, we have lost our country. And I pray that we can get back to, to that one day. But as, but as FDR said of December 7th, 1941, uh, the day that Pearl Harbor was attacked, we can say 2020 will be a year that will live in infamy. So the sermon series and study will, will consider the life of Joseph, a life filled with ups and a life filled with downs, very good times and very horrible times, uh, to see how Joseph fared uh, in the face of his adversity and how he trusted God. So you think your family is dysfunctional. You think your family has a few dysfunctions. You have a crazy uncle or a crazy aunt. Uh, take a look at Joseph's family. Joseph's family was the ultimate dysfunctional blended family. Uh, his father Jacob had two wives. Now uh, they were interchanging Jacob and Israel. Uh, God named Jacob Israel. So uh, those two terms are interchangeable as we move along in Genesis. So uh, Jacob, uh, Jacob's, uh, 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 Jacob had two wives, Leah and Rachel, uh, who were sisters. Uh, they weren't divorced. They were all one big, a big family. Uh, two wives, two concubines, uh, Zilpah, and Le uh, Zilpah, who was Leah's maidservant, and Bilhah, who was Rachel's maidservant. Leah had six sons by Jacob. Uh, uh, Bilhah had two sons by Jacob. Zilpah had two sons by Jacob. Joseph was the eleventh son born to Rachel after it seemed Rachel would have no children. Uh, and then Benjamin, uh, born also to Rachel, was the youngest of twelve sons born to Jacob. But Rachel died in childbirth uh, when, when, Jacob was, when uh, Benjamin was born. So it seems that Jacob uh, held that against Benjamin. Um, uh, and the scriptures say Jacob loved Joseph more than all of his other children, which included Benjamin, because Joseph was the son of his old age. But Jacob, but Benjamin was the son of his older old age, but he still loved Joseph more than all of his children. The six sons of Leah. Uh, this is going to be on the test, so remember this. Uh, the six sons of Leah. Uh, Reuben was the firstborn. Uh, to Jacob, and then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, uh, Issachar uh, and Zebulun, uh, two sons of Bilhah, Rachel's maid, Dan and Naphtali, two sons of Zilpah, uh, Leah's maid, Gad and Asher, and then the two sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin, twelve sons. Now there were daughters also, there were only one, but they weren't numbered, there, and there was only one named, and that was Dinah, but there were certainly daughters as well. Two wives, two concubines, children with all four of these women. Uh, Leah was jealous of Rachel because Jacob loved Rachel. The only reason Jacob, uh, the only reason Jacob uh, uh, married Leah was because his father-in-law tricked him uh, on his wedding night and gave him Leah instead of Rachel, uh, who had been promised to him. So Rachel was, uh, and Rachel was jealous of Leah because Leah was giving Jacob children right and left. Rachel was unable to bear children until much later in marriage. Leah, at one point, uh, 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 paid Rachel for a night of romance with Jacob. Uh, uh, then throw Zilpah and Bilhah uh, and, their, and all of their children in the mix. The scripture even records Reuben, the oldest son, uh, Jacob's oldest son, uh, after he was grown, had an affair with Bilhah, his father's concubine, his aunt Rachel's maidservant, his mother's, uh, the mother of his two half-brothers, Dan and Naphtali. And then Rachel dies giving, giving birth to Benjamin, 
What, what a royal mess. All in one big unhappy family. And Jacob, Israel, made bad matters worse when he demonstrated in, a, in very tangible terms uh, and for all the family to see that he loved Joseph more than the rest of the children. Uh, and for this favorite, to- favorite child, he made, he made uh, uh, Joseph a, a colorful tunic. We know it as a, the coat of many colors. A tunic with long sleeves, a long tunic with long sleeves. Uh, um, and Jacob, remember, probably knew how to sew. Remember, uh, this dysfunction just comes down uh, through the families. Uh, Joseph's father, Jacob, was a twin brother to Esau. Uh, and Jacob... Uh, should have known better than to favor one child over the other because, uh, because his father, Isaac, favored Esau over Jacob. Isaac was a, a rugged outdoorsman, uh, burly and hairy from, from youth, uh, who hunted and fished and prepared game, wild game for, for his father to eat. While Jacob, on the other hand, was the, was the favorite of his mother. Jacob was the favorite of his mother, uh, and uh, it said he was born with smooth skin, uh, a scrawny kid who stayed in the tent all day long with his mother. So he probably uh, learned the skills, uh, of, he learned how to sew. So he sewed Jacob, his favorite son, a coat of many colors, a long tunic, uh, a colorful tunic with long sleeves. Now, some Old Testament scholars say not only was the tunic flowing and beautiful and colorful, but it was a symbol of status and superiority, a glaring in-your-face announcement that this son was set above the other brothers who were older. Jacob was only, or Joseph was only 17, remember, who were older and more experienced at herding sheep and in and the family business. Sort of like a, a, a business owner's spoiled brat son who's who hasn't worked a day in his life, comes home from college, and the owner puts him in charge of all of the employees who've had many years, uh, more years on the job than this kid is old. I'm beginning to like, uh, dislike uh, Joseph a little bit myself. Um, besides all that, he was, uh, he was handsome, a 17-year-old good-looking kid with, with the world by the tail. And it makes sense that his father set him over all of his other brothers because he went and told his father that his brothers were goofing off when they should have been working. They were on the clock, but they were goofing off. So his brothers already hated Joseph because he was a spoiled brat, favorite child who tattled to daddy and made their lives miserable. But they were pushed beyond the bounds of restraint when Joseph tells his brother his brothers a couple of dreams that he's, that he's had. And then the second dream has his brothers and his father and mother uh, bowing before him. So out of, out of all the, dis, the family dysfunction, out of all of the, the animosity, out of all of the hatred, which, which the father of the family, which Jacob fueled, Joseph's favored status is taken away and replaced by several, not only just one, but several very bad years. And Joseph's brothers found an opportunity to get, to get rid of this kid, the object of their resentment and the object of their hatred. Now, they would have killed Joseph had it not been for Reuben, the oldest. And one wonders if Reuben was just being the responsible eldest brother, the firstborn, or whether he had compassion on, jo- on Joseph, or, or was he seeing this as an opportunity to, to, to rescue Joseph as a plan to get back in the good graces of his father, Jacob? But Reuben convinced his other brothers to not kill Joseph, but throw him into a, into a dry cistern and just let him die there uh, instead of spilling his blood. That's messy. Uh, uh, hoping to come back unnoticed later and rescue Joseph. So they threw Joseph uh, in a cistern, and evidently that made them hungry because they just sat down and ate. It was lunch. It was time for lunch. Nothing's going to stop lunch break. We're sitting down and eating, probably with an earshot of, of Joseph's cries and pleas for help in this cistern. But before Reuben could come back to rescue Joseph, Judah suggested that they sell Joseph as a slave instead of letting him die from starvation in the cistern. Now, Judah has his own set of sins to deal with, which we'll talk about later in the sermon series. But we have to wonder about his motives as well. Is it compassion or just greed? He's more valuable. He's more valuable alive than he is dead. 
So they sell Joseph to slave traders headed for Egypt, rip, rip up his, his colorful tunic and dip it in blood to, to, to make it look like uh, Jacob, uh, Joseph was killed by wild animals and took uh, to Jacob, Joseph's father, uh, uh, this, robe, this robe that he had made ripped and, and blood-stained and Jacob was inconsolable over the apparent death of his favorite child, Joseph. So in the blink of an eye, Joseph's favored status, his life of blessing and security was turned into a life filled with violence, a life filled with fear, and a life, uh, a, a, a life filled with uncertainty. Now the next time we hear Joseph speak in Scripture is when he's fending off sexual advances uh, by Potiphar's wife. And again, Joseph, uh, Joseph's life turns from security to insecurity and from freedom and productivity to imprisonment. But listen to this. The text, the Scripture, has the audacity to say, to tell us, the Lord was with Joseph. What? The Lord was with Joseph? That's what the scripture says. And I found that the scripture is rather stubborn and doesn't reconsider when we challenge it with our doubts and fears. Scripture, we say, it just doesn't seem like the Lord was with Joseph. When his brothers nearly killed him and sold him into slavery, he had, a, he had a comfortable life. And Scripture, how can you say the Lord was with Joseph when he was wrongly accused and put away in prison? And not just any prison, it was where the king's prisoners were confined. Joseph referred to it as a dungeon. And in the same way, it seems the Lord has withdrawn his blessings from us Scripture, what else can go wrong in this dreadful year we know as 2020? But the Scripture doesn't say, well, well, now that you mentioned it, it seems highly unlikely that the Lord was actually with Joseph. Let me retract that statement for you to accommodate your doubts and fears. No. No. The scripture isn't assailed by our doubts and fears. The scripture doesn't bend or waver, but squares around to proclaim for all to hear the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with, was, was with Joseph when he enjoyed the favor of his, of his father. The Lord was with Joseph when his brothers sold him into slavery. The Lord was with Joseph when he enjoyed, enjoyed the favor of Potiphar. The Lord was with Joseph when he languished in prison. And the Lord accomplishes his purposes in spite of dysfunctional families and in spite of evil men, uh, the evil that men bring on one another. And, and when Joseph was reunited with his brothers, he said this of all things, what you intended for evil, God has used to accomplish good. What? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.